Okay, this is 11.6, Kirchhoff's Laws. Kirchhoff's Laws, super duper duper important for this unit. Um, they're really how we are able to figure out the relationship between voltage and uh, current in our circuits. So, he has a funny name, Kirchhoff, but his laws are very useful. Kirchhoff's Voltage Law. There's a Kirchhoff's Voltage Law and a Kirchhoff's Current Law. So, Kirchhoff's volta Voltage Law, we call it KVL. And it says that um, the total the total voltage increase at the source is equal to the total um, voltage decrease. in the rest of a circuit. So what it means is, when we have some circuit with a power supply and a bunch of light bulbs or whatever it is we have on our circuit, the voltage that we're gaining from the power supply is equal to the total amount of voltage being used by everything else. Okay, and I think that, um, that makes a fair bit of sense, that law, but it becomes very useful for a few calculations. So the equation here is V series, the voltage for a series circuit is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 like this. And so that's the voltage at the source for a series circuit. So the source in a series circuit needs to be able to supply V1 plus V2 plus V3. And for a parallel circuit, the source is equal to V1, which is equal to V2, which is equal to V3, like this. And we'll, we'll just take a quick look at why that would be the case. So for our series circuit, we've got something like this. I've got my power supply here. And let's say I have one light bulb here, and I have another light bulb here, and we'll just say that that's my, my full circuit here. So this is the V series. That's how much my source needs to be giving in a series circuit. And here's V1, here's V2. So we're saying that V series has to add up to V1 plus V2. So V series equals V1 plus V2 in this case. Okay. And hopefully that one makes enough sense. The electrons have a certain amount of energy and it's spread out between V1 and V2. That's our series. For parallel, here's our parallel circuit. So I've got one bulb here. And I'll put a second bulb here. And I'll put one more, just for fun. Okay, there's my light bulbs. And this is my V parallel. I'm just going to put VP for now. And this is V1 on the first light bulb, V2, and V3. And you can see that the electrons can go in a few different ways. One of the options is the electrons could go just in this loop. And they don't go down the other path. That's, that's one loop that it can do. The electrons could also do this loop. Or they could do this loop. So there's sort of three options there. And you see that in each case, all the voltage needs to be up. If we have the parallel voltage, all of that voltage needs to be used up in that full path. So for the red guy, it only went through V1. That means that V1 needs to use all of that parallel voltage. And for the green path, well, again, V2 had to use up all of that uh, thing, because they only ever go down one of these paths. So you can see how that works, hopefully. That's the difference between parallel and series circuits. That's the KVL. Now we also have Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, which is similar. And it says that um, the 
current entering a, jun a junction a junction equals the current leaving the junction. This is in a complete circuit. So what's th what that's saying is when the current has a chance to split up into a few different paths, all those paths need to add up to the total current going into that split. So again, we'll take a look at that below. Um, the way the equations come out looks very similar to above. Now we're talking about I, and so we can say the I, the current for series, is equal to current 1, which is equal to current 2, which is equal to current 3. And the current for a parallel, this is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, like this. And so if you compare that to the equations that we have above, you'll see that they're sort of the same, but they're flipped. The voltage for a series is V1 plus V plus V2 plus V3, whereas the current for a series is I1 equals I2 equals I3. And for parallel, they've, they've swapped. Okay, so just to explore what this current law is talking about here, we'll look again at a series circuit. Series. That's an R there. Series. Um, okay, so for our series circuit, We've got this guy here. I'll draw it the same as I drew it above, like this. And if I have my I series, I'll just put IS here. This is my power supply. Well, this is how fast the electrons are moving. So if they're moving this fast at the front here, they need to keep on moving the same speed all the way around. It's like if you're in a car and the traffic is moving forward. It, you know, if there's a slowdown anywhere in the traffic, if the traffic gets slowed down here, then everything gets slowed down. And that's actually what our um, light bulbs are doing, is they are slowing down the current. Anyway, so they are slowing it down, but it means that the whole thing needs to slow down, because it all needs to move at the same speed. So this is 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 equal to I1 here and I2. They're all the same. I1, I2, like this. For a parallel circuit, I'll draw our parallel circuit here. Like this. And what we have here, this is the IP for I uh, parallel. And you can see that at these junctions, this is a, a junction here, and this is another junction here, and this is another junction here. These are all junctions. And so it's saying that the total current going into the junction, well here the, to the current going in is IP, so this here is IP, that needs to um, equal the total current going out. So if this has, we've got some current some current going here so this is i1 some current going here this is i2 and some current going here i3 see how those are all branching off from this initial junction at the start here so if it was ip at the front well i1 plus i2 plus i3 all need to add up to that that total parallel um current because when we get back to here it's coming back to IP. Because that's what the KCL is saying. Is It's saying the total current when we leave this junction has to be equal to the co total current when we come back. So, you can see then that the uh, parallel needs to equal I1 plus I2 plus I3, like this. Okay, we'll try a couple problems involving these. So it says if a 6 volt battery with a 0.2 amps of current is connected to three identical light bulbs in series, what is the voltage and current of each light bulb? Okay, well, um, first we can use 
Well, we could use a few things here. We know the current and we know the voltage. So, 0.2 amps of current. I think this is a good place to start because we can say that this is a series circuit, so I series is equal to, if we look above, I1, which is equal to I2, which is equal to I3. So that means that the current of the first light bulb is going to be 2.0 amps because I series was 2.0, uh, sorry, not 2, 0 0.2 amps. So all three of these are 0 0.2 amps. There we go. Now for the series voltage, V series is V1 plus V2 plus V3. And we also know from the question that it is 6.0 volts. Well, V1 and V2 and V3 are all the same voltage. We're told that the light bulbs are all the same. So that means that 6.0 volts is equal to 3V, where V is just the voltage of, of any of these guys. So therefore, V equals 6.0 over 3, 2.0 volts. So we can say, therefore, V1 equals 2.0 volts, V2 equals 2.0 volts, and V3 equals 2.0 volts. There we go. So we've used the series laws for that circuit. We'll go to the next page here. It says if a 6.0 volt battery with a 0.3 amp of current is connected to three identical light bulbs in parallel, what is the voltage and current of each light bulb? Okay. Well, we know here V parallel equals V1 equals V2 equals V3 and we're told that the parallel voltage is 6.0 volts, so it means that all of these have 6.0 volts of um, potential difference. That's the V parallel, and now we want I parallel. This is I1 plus I2 plus I3. And we're told that this is 0 0.30 amps. Well, again, we've got 0 0.30 amps is equal to 3i, because again, our current is the same on all three of these guys. So we can find that i is equal to 0 0.3 over 3, which is equal to 0 0.10 amps. So there we have the voltage and the current of each of these again. Finally, analyze this mixed circuit. So mixed circuits are more fun because we combine series and parallel at the same time. Find each unknown voltage and current given the following information. V source is 40 volts. And I'm going to start putting the, this information right onto the picture because it helps to do that. So we've got 40 volts here. V1 is 10 volts. This is 10 volts. Uh, V3 is 20 volts. Good. I source is 0 0.4 amps, and I3 is 0 0.10 amps. Okay, so we have enough, um, enough to work with here. The way I like to set these up is we've got 1, so we've got V1 and I1, so I'm looking at the first lamp. So we're going to say V1 equals I1 equals 2, V2 equals and I2 equals 3, V3 equals and I3 equals 4, okay, and then we have our source. 
which is v source equals and i source equals. And this way we can just make sure we have our information for every single thing. So already I can fill in the, the blanks that we had um, from the problem. V source and I source were given to us. And we have V1 was 10 volts. We have V3, 20 volts. V uh, I3 was 0 0.10 amps. And now we can start filling in some other blanks. So we know that for a parallel um, circuit here, we can focus on our parallel connection first. So we have a, a piece that's parallel, and then if we solve that bit first, we can then look at that piece as going with our, our other series piece. So it will be connected in series with this guy. Okay, so starting with our parallel here, lamp 4 has to have the same voltage as lamp 3. That's going by the um, Kirchhoff's voltage law in a parallel circuit. Lamp 4 has to have the same voltage. So we've got the same voltage here, 20 volts. Good. And um, we can do a few other things here. Okay, so if we um, focus still on lamp 4, we know that the total current for this parallel circuit needs to be 0 0.4 amps because that's the current that we had at our source. And that's split between lamp 3 and lamp 4. So we know that current 4 is going to be 0 0.40 amps minus I3 because those two need to add up to that total 0 0.4 amps. So I3 was 0 0.1, so we get I4 is 0 0.30 amps. Good. And now we can focus on the 1 and 2, the series um, pieces here. So we know that the current for 1 and 2 needs to be the same, again, as the current at the source because they're connected in series. So we have current 1 has to be 0 0.40 amps, and current 2 has to be 0 0.40 amps. And the last piece that we have is that our total voltage, our 40, amp, uh, 40 volts here, sorry, part of that is going to lamp 1, part of that is going to lamp 2, and part of that is going to the parallel circuit of 3 and 4. So that means V2 is equal to our total, 40 volts, minus V1, minus the voltage in 3 and 4. And so I can take the voltage of 3 or the voltage of 4. It's the same thing. Cause they, they're a parallel circuit there. They have to have the same one. So I'll do minus V3. So we have 40 minus 10 minus 20. We get 10 volts remaining for that guy. And now we're, fu we're done. We have found all the different pieces. So I recommend laying things out this way, where you have all your different pieces and you can fill in the blanks. It's sort of just a puzzle. All right, um, I hope you have fun with the homework problems and um, give them a try.